Hey, thanks for tuning into my YouTube channel. Just got back from Estonia, a beautiful country. One of the reasons I went out there was checking out the IO House. Now the IO House is a fully autonomous prefab home designed by a company out in Sweden and manufactured in Estonia. The folks there had been gracious enough to allow me to stay for a couple nights, test it out and uh, share my thoughts and feedback. So here it is. So just flew in to Tallinn, uh, Estonia. Gonna be filming a review of the one and only IO house. And I do hope, you know, my goal is to invest in this for Airbnb up north and introduce this technology into the US and uh, see how it goes. All right, just heading off to meet up with the folks at IO house. Uh, they're gonna kind of give me a rundown on the system uh, what it's all about, and it uh, should be pretty exciting. So, driving to the IO house, it's uh, about an hour away from Tallinn, uh, out in the woods. It's uh, here, I guess, an uh, old Russian base that they once had, but should be exciting. Um, Roads here are fairly good. They do lock down on those speed limits, so we're gonna make sure we get there and get there within the speed limit. All right, so we are driving down this private road following the folks from IO House. Google, of course, sent us a little bit of a windy, uh, weird path, but they cleared the air and this should be fun. Dry Dock Studios, we don't just focus on video and cinema gear. We do also talk a little bit about technology. I am close to the one and only IO House. Now this home is a fully autonomous prefab home designed by a Swedish company in Estonia. And so they were gracious enough to let me stay for a couple nights and do a full review on what would be like a typical short-term rental stay and what that might look like on the power consumption. In my first night, I've used approximately 40% of the battery, and uh, that was with temperatures of uh, at night in uh, 45 degrees Fahrenheit. And this is cool, this is get a little porch here that's showing you an example of you know, what you can have. You can have like two seating arrangements, and of course, <laughs> in the US, you would most likely have a grill. Now, this is pretty cool. So in Europe, they're a little different than we are. We have just that one toilet seat where it just, you know, you press down and the toilet flushes. They have two. They have the big tank and the smaller tank. In some cases, you don't need the big tank. You can just use a small tank and you press down here and the toilet flushes. You know, if you have a, excuse my French, heavier load, uh, <laughs> you can use the uh, larger tank itself. So it'll push more water down. There are also uh, cables to connect to water sources. So if you wanted to, let's say, connect to a pump that's connected to a uh, Cartesian well, you can do that as well. But yeah, shower is good sized. You know, it does the trick. It's not meant to be uh, a jacuzzi, so it's not meant to be lived in, but it does have a lot of utility. You can shower comfortably. Now, taking you over to the kitchen, you have a fridge here and uh, reasonable size. Uh, again, for two people, very comfortable. Uh, even three, possibly even four people, you have a reasonably comfortable uh, size fridge and it's discreet. Also, good size freezer. You have about three levels that you can store items in. And um, here, this is fun. We even have a dishwasher. Uh, not your large size washer, but I mean, again, for utility purposes, it does the trick. 
and um, electric stove for two. Um, but here's here's a cool idea. They also have these cabinets that come out and you can store different pots and pans and uh, have some uh, you know, ingredients if you want, just, you know, or just any kitchen utensil items. You have your trash, um, again, discreet. You have your recycling and for your traditional trash. And they've adopted, again, the same concept from what you have in the bathroom. It's, you know, you press further. So you get more water. And then as you close this off, you're sealing the water. So good size kitchen, you know, you don't live there, but you get what you need to get done. Now, something that's really cool is, let's say you, again, autonomous home, solar, you want to be mindful of energy efficiency. So if you walk in and you don't want to have to turn the lights on, but they do have this section here at the bottom where the bed essentially lights up and it gives you plenty, plenty of light at the bottom. You do have plenty of room to hang up anything you have. You see the lights do turn on and off, so that's pretty cool. And you have some more hanging space. One of the things I like the most about this is how they manage the space. So you still have a large couch and have enough uh, space to walk around. There is a uh, connection room off to the right. So essentially, if you wanted to connect propane tanks as opposed to using a diesel generator in the wintertime, you could do that. But yeah. Great home, you have the bedroom right up on here. And I'd say this current configuration, the way they have it now, it's perfect. The reason why they were able to install this unit was because it didn't dig into the ground. You just plop it on and it works. It has a tank, a 2,000 gallon dark water tank and a 3,000 gallon clean water tank. So for a camping home, a second home, this is it. This is perfect. You got smart home technology. You're dealing with an ample amount of solar energy to hold you over. And then for those situations where you do in the wintertime require a generator, you could essentially plug in a propane tank or some sort of generator off to the side and have ample amount uh, so you don't have to keep refilling it depending on the temperature in your area. Now, you're gonna ask the million dollar question, shipping. You're in Estonia, they're a Swedish company. I've spoken to the uh, representatives there. They can work with you on shipping. You know, shipping costs to have them come to your location could be tens if not twenty, thirty thousand dollars So that's something to always consider when you're looking at something like this. Uh, I'm pretty impressed. I think, the, I think we're moving in the right direction. So my thoughts on the IO house, I will have to say they hit some serious home runs. They actually just won a prestigious architectural award for autonomous uh, integration and design. They have really thought through pretty much everything from usage and even some backup plans should the solar panels not work. So kudos to them, hats off. Now, the, one of the things I could see a home like this being used mainly for is like an STR. It's great because you can set up the keys for an account. You can uh, allocate the amount of days that the person has access to the place. You don't have to pay for gas. You don't have to pay for electricity during certain seasons. A couple things I didn't notice, the door, uh, when you pressed it, it was closing and locking. That's something that the folks over at IO House did share with me that they're working to recalibrate. They had a very strict security measure put in so that if somebody tampers with the codes on the front, the doors automatically close. So kudos, but they're, they're gonna be working out that detail. The other thing is when you do purchase it, you will have to consider about ramping. And yeah, there's a control panel right when you walk in. It's an iPad with the software that monitors your total usage and gives you all the information that of, you, know, you can turn the lights on and off. So I found it a little bit confusing with which lights are which and kind of some of the settings. I think they can work on that. I'm sure that that's just a user experience redesign and uh, they can probably just, you know, simplify it a bit more. But it's great to know you could do that. You can basically monitor your battery usage, uh, your consumption, and then your storage, how much you're actually storing from solar. Hats off to Helios and Mario over at IO House for being such 
uh, gracious host. They were even offered, they even offered to give me a ride there. So big, big plus there, class when it comes to customer service. All right, well, before we do end, I do have a few questions that did come in from folks that are interested in purchasing the unit. And I figured why not answer them here. One of the questions is, is how many square foot does the IO house space have? Uh, and right now the residential area that they have is 645 square feet. Now that includes a one bedroom, kitchen and a bathroom with a width of 16.4 feet, length of 29.37 feet and a weight of 30 tons. So it is a big boy. Uh, another question that came in was how long will it take for the product to be developed and shipped after purchasing? Great question. So they have assured that the uh, development and delivery will take about five months. Now shipping time depends on the season and would roughly uh, be about three to four weeks, really depending on the port. Again, it is being shipped from Estonia, so they would have to do some logistical uh, maneuvering in order to get it into the country. Uh, another question that came in, a uh, great question is, what is the materials made out of? Uh, the house is built on an iron frame and it has, so it's very strong and uh, I'm sure there's some wood there as well. And as far as insulational levels, they basically use Norwegian building standards. Um, and as you can imagine with regards to insulation, if you know anything about Norway, it can get pretty cold. I'm pretty sure they know uh, a thing or two about insulation. But they're willing to work with whatever your local and state regulatory standards are. Now, the other good question came in about warranty. So let's say you purchase it, what does the warranty look like? It comes with a two-year warranty, and they're currently working with a contractor out in South Carolina. Now, as far as software is concerned, um, they would be effectively able to do over-the-internet updates, firmware updates. So yeah. These are some of the you know, top questions I've received and wanted to answer to the folks. And of course, if there are any other additional questions you might have, please be sure to leave the comments down below and I'll see to it to see if I can get those answers for you. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons as a way to support and get future updates. And uh, we'll see you next time. Take care.